I recently posted a video where I looked at the wisdom to be found in Dr. Gooby's MIT trained neurosurgeon who quit. In that video, Dr. Gooby talked about all the reasons why he quit his job doing spinal surgeries, even though he was being paid great money. In today's video, I wanna do a follow-up to look at some of the key points in that video, highlighted by some of my viewers and some of their comments. And I also wanna show you two exercises that you might find helpful for your back pain. These exercises will help you avoid the path that Dr. Gooby says you should avoid, which is spinal surgery. So let's look at some pieces of wisdom and make sure you stay tuned to the end because the last one is kind of mind-blowing. If you're ready, let's get ready to think right, move right, and feel right. So before we jump into the wisdom, I want to show you a simple stretch that can really help with back pain in your mid-back and your lower back. So you're going to do a lat stretch. This doesn't require special equipment. You can do this with a handrail. You can do this with a pull-up bar as long as you're tall enough or have something to help you reach it. You can even do this in a door frame or with the corner of a wall. You're just going to grab onto a stable surface and you're going to be pulling open that side. You want to keep your low back flat. So think about tucking your tailbone and make sure you feel the stretch through that open side along your ribs and in your armpit. You don't want to go so deep that you feel pinching or jamming in your shoulder. You want to feel stretch and challenge all along the actual length of your lats. Just don't push so hard that you get pinching or jamming anywhere in the shoulder. Hold the stretch for 30 to 60 seconds. Breathe calmly and deeply so you can feel your ribs expand and contract. You wanna feel your lats allowing your ribs to expand and contract. Explore different angles with your arm closer to your head, further from your head, a little more upright, a little lower to the floor. Just find the angle that gives you the nice stretch sensation and feel that release going all the way from your armpit into your lower back. Make sure you do this on both sides and it will help your back feel better and also help you feel more aligned. Speaking of alignment, let's look at one of the biggest lessons that you can pull from Dr. Gooby and his confession. And I feel like this might be one of the most important lessons anyone can learn and follow so that their life doesn't suck. The lesson is that if your job is not aligned with your values and you don't feel like you're helping people in some way, you're probably going to feel miserable. You're gonna feel major undercurrents of distress, assuming you're not a sociopath driven by a pathological desire for money. And yes, we all know people like that. Hello, I like money. One of my viewers, I want a biscuit please, said his video deeply moved me and I felt like it came out at a time when I needed to see it. As someone who feels very disillusioned by my time in the workforce and is wondering what to do with myself in the long term career wise. Sometimes prestigious jobs only look good from the outside, but prestige and lots of money can't make up for having to ignore your own values and needs. It was also so refreshing to see a surgeon highlighting the importance of a holistic approach to healthcare. I can't agree more with this comment, I want a biscuit please, and I hope you find the biscuit that you want. Speaking from personal experience, doing something that helps other people that you feel good about, that aligns with your values, makes life feel a whole, whole lot better. I actually worked for a brief period in my 20s at a law firm as an administrative assistant, and I watched partners at the law firm who were in their 40s, 50s, and 60s look like they were 30 years older than they actually were. They hobbled and limped. They were constantly irritated and stressed out. Whenever they went on vacation, they were constantly still working. And even though they were billing for hundreds of dollars an hour, I did not envy them one bit. There was one attorney who was working as basically the pit bull for a credit card company, and that guy looked the worst. That stint at the law firm taught me that I definitely did not want to be a lawyer pushing papers for a large corporation. And now let's talk about another exercise that can be really helpful for back pain. You gotta turn on your glutes. Most of the time you're just sitting on your butt, like you're sitting on your butt watching me right now, hopefully not on the toilet. If your glutes don't work, you can't move your pelvis correctly, you don't feel stable with your hips, and your spinal muscles lock up. 
So doing the glute bridge and some other glute exercises can be really helpful. Glute bridges you can do at home on the floor. You can also do variations where your back is up on a bench or on the side of your couch. Whatever variation you do, it's gonna be helpful for turning on your glutes and it can be really good to do these single leg style or with extra weight so that your glutes get a lot stronger so that you feel stable and so you can even run faster. I've got a whole video where I talk about exercises to help you turn on your glutes that I will link to in the description box, so be sure to check that out later. Working on your glutes and your lats should go a long way towards helping you with back pain, and it highlights the importance of taking a holistic, whole body approach to back pain. It's not just about laser focusing on your spine and thinking, oh yeah, if I just do something right here on the spine, I'm gonna fix your back pain. Dr. Gooby emphasizes this He's very clear that surgery on the spine is not really the fix for back pain. My viewer Sherry G1838 encapsulates the wisdom with her comment. She says, I was struck by what he said was common in everyone who no longer has pain, whether they had surgery or not. They ate low salt, mostly plant-based diet, exercised, had enough sleep, didn't smoke, didn't drink much alcohol, had good social support, and had reduced stress. All things that have impacted my life and improved my health. Of course, I'd be lying if I said that I thought the dietary advice is perfect. I think for many people, it can actually be great advice, go plant-based, eat natural foods, but at the same time, there are some people who do seem to thrive on carnivore diets, low-carb diets, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, you have to take that part, maybe with a grain of salt, maybe a small grain, maybe a large grain. You do need to figure out what works for you. I know my digestive system currently seems to not like having too many veggies, definitely doesn't like some specific items like cabbage. My wife and son can tell you that cabbage and any kind of dairy product is a recipe for a very stinky evening. And all that bloating and gas means I don't sleep that well, which sets me up for a pretty miserable next day. The point here is that you have to find the diet that makes you feel good and eating processed foods, eating fast food all the time, getting takeout all the time is probably not going to make you feel good. And finally, a fantastic comment from Del Mar, 1387 who shares his experience with hip, neck, and back pain. It's an incredible perspective from a neurosurgeon friend that will help you understand the full picture when you have chronic pain, whether it's in your back, your hip, whatever, and are hoping that surgery will fix you. So here it is. I developed idiopathic hip, neck, and back pain from poor exercise habits and posture. If you're wondering what idiopathic means, it means they didn't know what caused it. And over time, Delmar figured it out. It's actually from poor exercise habits and bad posture. I was always a strong guy, college athlete, super active, and this happened to me at 30. It has taken me two years to work my way out of this, but so much of it was trauma and lifestyle. I've learned a ton. I have a friend. This is where it gets really good. I have a friend who is a neurosurgeon who I saw over this previous 4th of July. I was explaining to him all that I had gone through and learned, and he remarked, quote, wow, it's very lucky you stayed out of the medical system. If you had gone with the usual protocol, you would have ended up in my office in your early 30s, prescribed a synthetic form of heroin, and looking for a surgery that I could technically do, but might not even help you. Worst case scenario, you could catch me or a colleague on a bad day, and we could accidentally paralyze you for the rest of your life. I think that stands on its own without my needing to add anything. So what do you think about that last statement? What do you think about that story? Drop me a comment on what you learned from this video or from Dr. Gooby's video. I'd be really curious to see what hits you the hardest. And I'm also gonna throw a few more exercise recommendations for back pain in the description box down below. So check down there for links to more free videos. If you're struggling with back pain right now, I invite you to go to uprighthealth.com DIY and check out the Back Pain Fix program. It'll help you rebuild your back and your body at home. And if you don't have back pain, go there anyway and sign up for the Body Rebuilding Basics. It's got free workouts and free wisdom to help you rebuild your mind and your body. If you'd like to support this channel and future content like this, please use the join and thanks buttons on YouTube or go to uprighthealth.com donate for all the simple, easy options. I really appreciate your support. Wherever you are in your journey, I hope this video helped you and I hope you always remember that pain sucks, life shouldn't.